LVAD volume that's done by one of the proprietary companies that is survey surgeons. And what I want to show you here is the blue line is bridge to transplant, red is destination therapy. And just this past year, they cross over. So we're now putting more VADs in for destination therapy. We expect that red to keep going up. We expect the bridge to transplant to stay more or less flat because the volume of transplants isn't going up. Showing here, summarizing once again, that our survivals are much better with the latest generation. Do we have a ways to go? Absolutely. But I can now with full confidence say to my patient, you should have this done. I couldn't do that with the first generation. I, I just, I couldn't in my heart of hearts. I had to think what I would do for myself or my family member. And I don't think I would, I would undergo a HeartMate 1. I would do a HeartMate 2 in a second. Just seeing the dramatic difference in these pa patients' lives. It's interesting, patients were interviewed at different stages of heart failure. Uh, so if patients who needed a wheelchair at the airport are up here, these are getting worse. Can't walk five blocks, can't walk a block, can't dress without stopping, can't get out of bed. So the worse they were, the greater the likelihood they would accept LVAD therapy. So you can see, you know, everybody is doing their own little risk assessment, risk reward. What we would like to do is we want to put them in over here, but we want to teach them about VADs over here. We want to get them to understand more about it before they're so sick that it's difficult for them to make a decision. The earlier they know, the better the decision they can make. I'm going to skip that. And so this is just showing that escalating therapy, we're trying to introduce the VADs to them earlier in patients so they could think about it and know about it before. I want to make a mouth again. This is where we want to get, right? I'm able to say, yes, doc, I want it. <laughs> They've gone mainstream. Here's my other political. Whatever you think about his politics, our vi former vice president has a heart made 2 LVAD in now. We don't know whether he's going to be listed for transplant or he's getting it for DT. He's 69. I think he's had five prior cardiac procedures, including cabbages and the usual BIV AICD. I, I really have a lot of respect for him because he could have kept this really quiet. And he's more progressively opening himself up. The more he appears in public now, I think the better exposure it'll give for VADs, whatever you think about the guy. So the new developments and trends and what's happening now, how are we going forward? We're getting better and better reliability. We're getting better and better survival. Smaller VADs, driveline's getting smaller. We're going to eliminate the driveline. We're going to reduce morbidity. We're going to improve patient acceptance. We're going to introduce still newer technologies. Uh, there are now devices based on the same technology that are smaller that you can put in in earlier patients. And these are totally implantable. And you can put in just through a cut down uh, right below the clavicle. Uh, the market is expanding. We're going to have a true totally implantable VAD and total artificial heart relatively soon. And we're going to have better cost containment. The third generation VADs, as I mentioned to you, are, may have even better durability, but it's not, quite year it's not quite clear yet whether we need the third, third generation because the second generation is lasting so long. The future will show us that. This is the technology that allows the drive line to vanish. And there's energy transfer across the skin. There are coils that are implanted in the patient, and the patient puts a charging coil on top of his skin. And he basically charges the battery underneath. Right now, the challenge is this is already available. One of the total artificial hearts has this technology. But for every pay hour the patient is, is free, he has to connect himself and charge for an hour. And so we have to make that better. But that is getting better. The LVAD cost, and this is one of my final points, is getting better and better with time too, all right? The question is, how are we going to pay for this as a society? And the real answer is going to be easy when we show that the VADs are cheaper than repeatedly hospitalizing these patients. So the LVAD is well characterized. It's proven for advanced stage heart failure. Ultimately, the newer generations are going to allow us to put, to put them in earlier and earlier in better risk patients. Is it all worth it? I definitely think it is. I mean, the, the difference that you see in the patients, and even those who take care of them in the CICU just a short time after surgery, they're already markedly improved. They, believe it or not, these are a bunch of VAD patients who basically couldn't get out of bed. And these are the ones, this film was taken from the first generation VADs. As you know, these advanced heart, they can't do anything at home. They're essentially sitting there with a remote we don't advise them to go fishing because we don't like them to get sunk in the water. It's, not, it's one of the few contraindications. Uh, patients can shower. There are special plastic coverings for them, but they can't bathe. They can't go swimming. 
with the fully implantable one, they will. And I, one of the most exciting ones is I think the last patient on here. And we don't advise them to do this. Is some of our patients have gone four-wheeling. Uh, I know some of you guys know these patients. You know, we kind of like, don't tell us. Don't tell us. They get very active. They feel so good and they get so active that they actually present with driveline issues because they're fracturing them and they're causing, look at this guy. That guy has a vet. So yes, I think it's worth it. And to go back to the theme from the $6 million man, the questions we asked, who should we rebuild? The end stage heart failure patients, the goal is for earlier implantation. How should we rebuild? Put LVADs in them. They're good for the vast majority of patients. Emerging technologies are getting even better. What can we expect? Prolongation of life. And I put life in italics, not prolongation of death. Will the patient be happy? Vast majority? Yes. And can we pay for this? Ah, future will hold that. We must compare it to medical therapy. Thank you.